Ida Tarbell was born November 5, 1857, in Erie County, Pennsylvania. She died January 6, 1944. She died at the age of 86 in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Ida Minerva Tarbell was an American teacher, author, and journalist of the late 19th, early 20th century. She was most commonly known as the author of the History of the Standard Oil Company and one of the leading muckrakers of the Progressive Era. Taking down the second wealthiest figure of the modern period was no easy feat for Ida, but she beat John D. Rockefeller with nothing but a pen and paper. The Conflict of Standard Oil and Ida Tarbell this is how Ida Tarbell took down the largest company in America. John Davison Rockefeller was born July 8, 1839 in Richford, New York. He was born the son of a poor salesman. His father, also known as Devil Bill, left the family when he was still young which forced Rockefeller to sell candy, raise turkeys, and do jobs for neighbors in order to provide the income for his family. Rockefeller then started working with an oil rig later in life. He then got a call from a man named Cornelius Vanderbilt, also known as the Commodore. On his way to meet Vanderbilt, though, Rockefeller missed his train that later got into a bad accident. The train Rockefeller was supposed to be on had fallen off the tracks. He believed that God spared his life. This changed Rockefeller into more of a man than what he already was. When it came time to meet Vanderbilt, Rockefeller was more confident than ever. Rockefeller told Vanderbilt that he could fill 60 trains per day with oil and that he would fill other train companies' trains with oil if he decided to make a deal with another oil company. Rockefeller proposed to Vanderbilt that he could only sell oil at about $1.65 which is about $13 to $14 today. As far as Rockefeller was concerned with filling Vanderbilt's trains, it was that he needed to drill to find it. He knew that trying to fill the trains with enough oil would take a gamble of drilling in order to find the oil. When Rockefeller finally found out that businesses refined the oil before selling it, he followed in their footsteps. Soon enough, Rockefeller got so much oil that he had too much to fill Vanderbilt's trains. Rockefeller then started gaining more and more power because of his new company, Standard Oil. He later started making better deals off of other railroad companies by pawning them off of one another. Any major railroads that Rockefeller gained money off of, he would buy out his competitors with it. Vanderbilt started noticing that Rockefeller was gaining a lot of power with his company, so he teamed up with his enemy, Tom Scott, to take down his company. He refused to allow him to sell oil on his trains, so Rockefeller built a pipeline to transport his oil. Rockefeller's net worth is about $340 billion today. Over the years, after figuring out how to sell refined oil, kerosene, Rockefeller's company grew and emerged into the largest oil company in the country. He soon became the richest man in America of his time and used those profits to buy out his competitors. Today, we would call this a monopoly. If he couldn't buy out the competitors, he would soon drive their businesses into the ground, leaving the company no choice but to shut down. Rockefeller was gaining money rapidly by beating out his competitors with no problem. Ida Tarbell's father, Franklin Sumner Tarbell, owned one of the many oil rigs that were shut down after refusing to sell to Rockefeller. After the Tarbell's company was shut down, the family began to rapidly lose money and was forced to move to Titusville, Pennsylvania. Growing up in Pennsylvania, Ida pursued journalism and later became a teacher in New York City. She was classified as a muckraker and was thought to have pioneered investigative journalism throughout the country. She began to write books, for example, All in the Day's Work and The Business of Being a Woman, and of course, the most famous, the history of the Standard Oil Company. Ida Tarbell was not the first person to go against Rockefeller and Standard Oil, though. A man by the name of Henry Lloyd heard Rockefeller testify in 1887 before the new Interstate Commerce Commission and was disgusted by Rockefeller and what he said. He wrote an article named Wealth Against Commonwealth that went against what Rockefeller said in his testament. Lloyd wrote about how Rockefeller was a criminal and how he belonged quote, in the penitentiary. Lloyd wrote the book against Rockefeller, but had a hard time finding a publisher. When the book was finally 
finally released, it was a huge sensation to the Bellbug people. This was the start of a sensation. Later, another journalist came around and also wrote a book about Rockefeller. She wrote about how he was taking steps to build his company and why it was illegal. She was writing very clearly and aggressively to make the point that Rockefeller and his company should no longer be in business. This young author was going to be known in history as the muckraker who took a pen to Standard Oil, Ida Tarbell. In her book, The History of the Standard Oil Company, she states that Rockefeller would take away all means of transporting his competitors' oil, and if they found a way to sell, they would be forcibly driven out of business. Quote, he collected drawbacks of the oil other people shipped. At the same time, he worked with the railroads to prevent other people getting oil to manufacture. Or if they got it, he worked with the railroads to prevent the shipment of the product. If it reached a dealer, he did his utmost to bully or wheedle him to countermand his order. Tarbell. But like any villain in a story, Rockefeller thought that what he was doing was acceptable. Quote, I believe the power of making money is a gift of God. I believe it is my duty to go on making money and still more money, and to dispose of the money I make for the good of my fellow man according to the dictates of my conscience. John D. Rockefeller Ida Tarbell proved that Rockefeller was ruthless when it came to business and competition. It was said that, quote, Rockefeller was a creator of bony shortages to raise prices on products. The world read Ida's book and soon turned against Rockefeller themselves. He was known as the richest man in America. He ran most companies and sold out his competitors. After the history of the Standard Oil Company was released to the public, Rockefeller became one of the most hated people in America. Rockefeller was slowly reaching his age of retirement when something more drastic came of the situation. Ida's book, The History of the Standard Oil Company, helped take down Standard Oil through Teddy Roosevelt. After McKinley was assassinated a few weeks into his second term as president, Teddy Roosevelt took over the throne and he had a bad impression of Rockefeller. Roosevelt had previously read Ida's book on Rockefeller and saw how much the public hated him. Roosevelt took Rockefeller to court, stating that what he was doing was illegal and could not be continued. Quote, the federal gov government charged Standard with conspiring to restrain trade, thus violating the Sherman Antitrust Act of 1890. Even though the Antitrust Act was put in place 20 years ago, it was just now becoming an issue. The federal charges led to an explosion of indictments from other state courts. Now that Standard Oil was no longer under protection, trusts were now under attack by the court and politics, and oil was their top priority. St. Louis posted the greatest threat, however. They wanted to prove that by rebates and price fixing, he was sought to destroy all competitors. This trial went on for two years. Rockefeller was called to testify, but was able to respond clearly to every question that was asked. Despite how well he did in the court trial, though, it was still found that what he was doing went against the Sherman Antitrust Act. The Sherman Antitrust Act was sent on July 2, 1890. The Trust Act was set to prohibit trusts. Due to this, Standard Oil was told to be broken up by the federal court. This went to the Supreme Court, which was then sent to a higher court, which ordered Standard Oil to be dissolved within six months. Standard Oil then split into seven different companies. Though Rockefeller believed in Standard Oil Company, whether it was together or dispersed, this was said to be the end of Standard Oil. After Ida had rose to fame, she moved to Easton, Connecticut. She started lecturing there and writing important stories like her autobiography, All in the Day's Work. Ida Tarbell passed away from pneumonia January 6, 1944, after being hospitalized since December 1943. She died in Bridgeport Hospital. Rockefeller died of arteriosclerosis on May 23, 1937. Rockefeller died in the casements.